welcome to Playwrights Roundtable, a half-hour showcase featuring original plays produced right here in Central Florida by the organization Playwrights Roundtable. And today we're going to watch the Seven Second Itch, a play written by Stephen Miller and produced and directed by Larry Stallings. So this is a fun play. I can't wait to talk to you about it. Sit back and relax and enjoy the Seven Second Itch. with a J, or a G, Jeez, I can't remember, Geraldo, Gerbil, Gergen, Gatsby, Gerbils, Ger Ger Geronimo. What? Geronimo told you I couldn't tell a joke. You did. Just before he and Leslie Ann, your friend, sent us off on this Irwin Allen disaster film of a blind date, he did, I'll kill him. Guillermo didn't tell me you did. What? You told me you couldn't tell a joke. When? Right before when you were telling me that one joke, the short one. I did? Or after. Two minutes and 45 seconds ago, when you were just sitting Wait, here. Wait, let me get this straight. I told you I couldn't tell the joke just minutes before or after I successfully told you a joke. Yes, it was funny. The short one. Short? Joke. What was it, a knockoff joke? No, shorter. Oh, one-liner. No. Yes, yes, <laughs> it was a one-liner. Uh, but you've forgotten it. Yes, do you remember it? You can never have too much minimalism? No, not that one. But that one's funny, too. Oh, well, damn it, then. I've forgotten it. Oh, it was funny. Was it? I seem to remember I laughed. Did you? Yes. Oh. I don't recall. <laughs> well, I guess that makes us even. I can never remember the joke, either. <laughs> well, I have a good reason for forgetting. Oh, do you? Yes, I'm... Normally, I don't tell people this right up front like this, because then they judge you and they think you're this weird, mentally deranged freak or something, and I cannot stand to have people sticking a label on me. I mean, I'll go ahead and stick the label on myself if I want to label myself, that is, but I don't want other people to go around doing that and stuff. Like, hey! You have a colored sock? I do! Well, mine don't match. <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, I'm sorry I was late. I didn't even have a chance to put on my belt. Oh, uh, when? Oh, at home before I got here. I just stuffed it in my pocket. No, I mean, when were you late? Tonight, for the date. A man should never keep a woman waiting. I don't. Don't what? Keep a woman waiting. I no. I mean, a man should never keep a woman waiting. I mean, that's what my grandfather always said all the time when I was growing up, and I always just thought, are you a lesbian? <laughs> 
No. Oh. Why do you ask? Well, it's just when I was talking about being late for our date. Are you late? Yeah. yeah. I was too. Wait. You were waiting for me. I promise. No, I don't I got... think so. I went to the restroom. <laughs> but I was almost an hour late. Oh, me too. 52 minutes, 19 seconds. That is an odd talent. Good. Time, time thing you do. <laughs> oh, habit. No, I know. Oh? You mentioned it. If you say so. I don't remember. I'm ADD. What? Attention deficit disorder. I have ADD. You are? Yes. Really? Really, really? It's a neural disorder, I'll have you know. Not some sort of coup panacea invented by parents who cannot handle their hyperactive children. Doctors. Doctors are not just the ones who make buttloads of money prescribing the drugs for hairy parents to administer to children. Not just those doctors. Say attention deficit disorder exists and that it's real. Oh, I have it too. So I won't have you playing all high and mighty, saying I'm some sort of drug addicted freak. Oh, no, I do. Whose alcoholic mother pumped her full of some mind numbing drug just so that the old hag can sleep off her hangover a little longer. No, no, I have ADD too. What? I have ADD. I have it too. Get out! No way! You too. Yep. <laughs> How long? How long for you? Ever since I was four when my dad left my mom and me. <laughs> wow! And you? <laughs> How long? Yeah. Well, my mom said I kicked too much, so she had Ritalin pumped directly into me in the womb. <laughs> wow. I experimented in college. With Ritalin? No, lesbianism. But I'm not. I consider myself completely and totally straight. Oh, and not Ritalin, although I did experiment with some other drugs back in college. But not my Ritalin. I've always been very faithful with that. Oh, I think everybody does a little. Is what? Experiments. With lesbianism? No, with drugs. Oh, well, you couldn't really, could you? What? Experiment with lesbianism. <laughs> no, 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 no. But with the other, I did a lot of experimenting. <laughs> What, with guys? You experiment with guys. I guess you could say that. I guess a lot of us would get together and do stuff. <laughs> Lots of stuff. A bunch of you. Guys. Yes, and some women, too. Would get together and do... Lots of stuff, yes, but I don't anymore. <laughs> together. Yes, it was cheaper that way. Cheaper? What are you doing as an orgy that would save you money? Okay, wait a minute. What exactly would you do with this bunch of guys and some girls? Oh, well, pot mostly, but also some hash and some speed. And one time this guy brought back some tabs of acid from Chicago and... <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> but mostly I just did Riddler. Really? Yeah, I have ADD. You are? Yeah. Since when? I don't like your tone of voice. What are you implying, that ADD isn't something real? That it's just some psychobabble mumbo-jumbo disease of the week invented by a bunch of burned-out teachers and rich, fancy-pants doctors intent on duping hairy parents into buying expensive drugs to dope up their kids so that the burned-out teachers don't actually have to work to teach drooling, doped-up third-graders? No! I'm ADD, too! <laughs> oh, crap, that's right, I forgot. God in heaven, forgive me. <laughs> it's okay. It's difficult, I know. I do understand your sensitivity. Oh, you do? Yeah, being told that you're unable to focus, that you lack motivation. Oh, I got that on every report card. That you're stupid or slow, mentally challenged, <laughs> being stuck in the special class. <laughs> Driving that damn short bus. Then, then when they find out what's wrong with you, there's the labels and the medicine. Hyperactivity, attention deficit. All the kids know the daily trips to the nurse's office to get your special medication. Kate, Mrs. Bassadori says, half exasperated in front of everyone else in the room, it's time to go to the nurse's office to get your special medication. It's time to get your special medication from the nurse's office. I hate it, Mrs. Bassadori. Oh, mine was Miss French. She was always so sweet about it. Mrs. Bassadori didn't believe it was real. She thought my mom had made it up. My teacher swore it was the volatile combination of MTV internet, sugar, caffeine, and bad parenting that had somehow switched cheese my brain into the adult unfocused mess it is today. But those stupid <laughs> teachers couldn't argue anymore, not when our grades got better. <laughs> some. They got better some. Yeah, and we started paying attention. <laughs> More attention in class. And we quit dancing on the art tables, and we quit peeing on the floor in gym out of sheer excitement. You did that too? Yes, I did! Our friends and family treated us differently. Oh, I know. My grandfather always said, be wary of having a disease that's more nuisance to others than to oneself. He was an alcoholic. So was my mom. I know, you mentioned it. Be wary of having the disease that's more nuisance to others than to oneself. Lovely. My aunt always used to say the only product modern psychology produces is excuses and psychotherapists or its telemarketers. <laughs> Great. Really? Books? <laughs> Ugh. 
I know, me too, but, you know, this book club promised that they only read books over 200 pages or less, so I thought maybe, you know... Still. Books. Ew. <laughs> I know, and I put it off, and I put it off, and I put it off, and finally it came time for the weekend of the book club meeting, and I still hadn't read the book, so I ran out and got the cliff notes. Anyway, the book was Brave New World, written by Atlas Huxley in the spring of 1931, and I don't know about the book, but the cliff notes were brilliant! I mean, in it, Huxley argued that in the future, government and big business would fuse together into this nefarious capitalist conglomeration that would try to create a brave new world where they would try to control us by shortening our attention spans so that we wouldn't be able to fight against the evil regimes that were trying to control our minds and our bodies through their evil capitalist systems in which the government and big business had fused together as one to try to control us by shortening our attention spans. Did you know that I have attention deficit disorder? <laughs> no way! What a quickie dick! So do I! That's funny! <laughs> that was a wacky play. See, I bet you got a lot of cool stories to tell me about how you came up with that one. So we'll talk about that right after the break. We will have a conversation with Larry Stallings and Stephen Miller about the seven second itch. Stay tuned. ADD. I have it too. Get out! No way! You too. Yep. How long? How long for you? Ever since I was four when my dad left my mom and me. <laughs> wow! You've just seen another quick clip from The Seven Second Itch, a play written by Stephen Miller and directed by our own Larry Stallings. Good to see you again. Good Haven't seen you. you in a while. I guess it has been a while. Of course, you were just here not yeah. too long ago, so now we get a chance to see another one of your plays, mm -hmm. a very funny one with a sensitive topic, ADD. How did you come up with that idea? Well, you know, it's funny. I just read recently that um, the number of ADD cases had gone up like something like seven times since 1995, the number of diagnosed cases. And I thought, wow, that's a lot. And then I flipped over to another channel, and I was like, oh, wow, and this isn't helping, because it was just this quick, constant editing, just you know, back and forth. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. And I flipped to another channel, and there it was. And I thought, well, this isn't working. So I put in a movie, and there it was, all that quick choppy editing and I thought hmm maybe this is what we're heading toward and I thought that would be, <laughs> okay. be a good idea for a play. Because I'm sure if you're watching it and you have ADD, did you, did you ever have anybody in the audience that actually had this disorder and come to you and have any complaints or comments about it? You know what's funny is I keep waiting for that. <laughs> I really do. But the funny thing is um, parents of kids who have ADD um, oftentimes see the humor of what we're talking about. Okay. And the other thing is I have had people, adults and, and teenagers, walk up to me and say, I have ADD, and then I'm thinking, oh, God, here it comes. <laughs> and instead I get, that's exactly what it's like. And I'm really? like, oh, wow. <laughs> A little scary, but yeah. You know, and I think they understand that we're not really, we're having fun with it, really. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. And it was fun. It Thank was fun you. to watch. It was very wacky. Larry directing something like that. I mean, the lines are just coming at you back and forth, back and forth. How much of that did you really get into, or did you just let the characters sort of come up with their own quirkiness? Thank goodness I had two wonderful a actors, uh, Josh Cohagen and uh, Kimberly Luffman, uh, who uh, took it upon themselves mm -hmm. to uh, learn to speak that fast and wow. do it all. I had to do very little coaxing. They were ready to go. Kimberly had uh, done the play before, once before, so she had a little bit of a leg up on Josh. So uh, <coughs> she had uh, she had already learned the lines, all she had to relearn them. It had been a while. 
<laughs> but Josh had to learn for the first time, and uh, so she was a little ahead of him. So he really had to run to catch up as far as learning the lines, because as you know from from the play, the lines come rapid fast. So you cannot mm -hmm. stall at all, except for a few pauses that I put in purposely to just to change the meter of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. but other than that, they're just going full force, and they both did a great job of doing that. No, I didn't have to do too much coaxing. <laughs> <They didn't. laughs> not only that, but the lines, because of the n nature of the play, you can't, it's not, how are you, I'm fine, oh, that's a neat, well, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. follow logic. They jump back six lines, something they heard six <laughs> lines ago, they jump forward. You, they have almost their own um, track or meter Really tape right. that they're on, yeah. yeah right, and, and, and they adapted to that very well, and uh, they worked on their own, in fact, a couple of times even without me mm -hmm. uh, uh, being there because they just wanted to get their rhythm down. Mm -hmm. and, and my directing process was to stop them when they were doing something and that wrong. Would, that would and, break and, the rhythm. Correct, exactly, <laughs> and they were absolutely right, and they said, we just want to get alone and run it ourselves a few mm -hmm. times, and it worked, and uh, that's why it's nice having a good actors. I'd worked with Josh before, and I knew Kimberly, uh, so it was uh, nice to have people that were w willing to do this on their own. Was there a lot of ad-libbing in the process? Because it's, it's coming at you so fast. I would think every now and then you, you just got to insert something just to get to that line that you know. Well, for this play, I actually actually encourage that a little bit. There's, um, for the productions, actually, if we knew someone was in the audience, we'd change the teacher's names. And we'd okay. use their name in the audience. Um, and, you know, little things that they could do to add to it, I was perfectly fine with. They got the general gist of the play, you know, leading up to that monologue at the end. And then, um, you know, so, yeah, playing with it is a blast, you know. Yeah. But the problem with it is, because the lines come so fast, they don't have much time to ad lib because it'll throw them off the rhythm I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. Much of the learning of this play is learning the rhythm of it. So if they try to throw an ad lib, that'll usually throw them off. So frankly, the words they gave were pretty much exactly what he had written. Now, we did some, uh, some fooling around during the rehearsal process to get there, but during the actual performance, it was pretty much right on script. You told me you couldn't tell a joke. When? Right before when you were telling me that one joke, the short one. Did? Or after two minutes and 45 seconds ago when you were just sitting Wait, there. Wait, let me get this straight. I told you I couldn't tell the joke just minutes before or after I successfully told you a joke. Yes, it was funny. <laughs> the short one. Short? Joke. What was it? A knockout joke? No, shorter. Oh, one-liner. No. Yes, yes, <laughs> it was a one-liner. Uh, but you've forgotten it. Yes, do you remember it? I know the actors and I know them very well. I've been friends with them for a long time too. So anything that they bring to the mix, mm -hmm. I totally trust. Yeah. Absolutely trust. Right. In fact, he had written the part, the male part, for Josh yeah. with him in mind. Really? And a lot of writers do that. If they have a friend and they're writing on a topic, they think, oh, this is an actor that could do perfectly in this role. Mm -hmm. And so he had actually written it for Josh. Josh has that fantastic manic energy. <laughs> I mean, you just got to almost write something for him just for that, you know, so that people can enjoy it. Now, what about their costumes? I, I don't know too much about the disorder, but I don't think people dress that way. Do they really? <laughs> what, what was your uh, inspiration or your you reason know, behind making them look so wacky? In the middle of writing this, I thought, you know, well, I read books. I don't, you know, typically have issues forgetting things or jumping back and jumping forward on things. And for some reason, at work, I was so busy, I'd leave the house, I'd get to my car and go, I don't have my belt on. And something struck me about that, about, oh, you know, it should be obvious, so you have to go back in the house and get your belt. And I thought, that was the start, him not actually having time to put on his belt, so he stuffs it in his pocket. And that was the start, and I thought, you know what, everything in this play is extreme, so let's even take that to an extreme. <laughs> Yeah. Now, what about the kiss? <laughs> the, 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 it was not uh, awkward at all. Uh, Josh and Kimberly know each other, although I don't think <laughs> there's been anything romantic between them, but they know each other very well, so uh, they never had trouble with that at all. And In fact, we started doing the kiss early on because there again, it was a rhythm, and it was a, there was a beat there after the kiss before they realized, oh, this isn't for good. <laughs> you know, they kept working up to this moment, and, you could see, and the audience was with them. Oh, this is going to be a romantic couple. They they're made for each other, and they do the kiss, and then there's that beat, and then they realize, wait a minute, we're not one of each other. Wife off, wife off the kiss. Uh, uh, they did that uh, perfectly, pretty much from the first time. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the first time I told them, I said, uh, I think the first rehearsal, I said, don't worry about the kiss. Second rehearsal, I said, okay, we need to do the kiss because we need the timing for this, and they like uh, ran with it. They were perfect.
No, yeah. did you come up with a quick stand and then the kiss? Yeah, they actually they? they actually came up with that themselves. I yep. absolutely love that. That yeah, was yeah. one of the things I had that the when pause. we saw. Yeah, I had the pause. I ah. said, no, I want you to pause after. And, and I think it was Kimberly, I'm not sure. I don't want to give it the wrong credit. We'll say both of them decided. Yeah, why about if we stand yeah, and just stare at each other for a second? And yeah, they 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 it came was up with that. Hilarious! Yeah. I loved seeing that. That's what you hope that actors and directors bring to your play. Right. Yeah, Thank so. Obviously, the two of you have a, a long-standing relationship. You have a good rapport with one another. How many playwrights uh, roundtable productions have you worked on together? Together. This, this is, is the, the first, first PRT, but we have worked together. Okay. We we acted together three or four years ago. A play called Assassins is where we met, and then I directed Steve in a show I wrote called Orlando Vigilante for the Orlando Fringe, mm -hmm. and then this is the first time that I've directed something that he wrote. So uh, we've had uh, a weird uh, symbiotic relationship, but this is the first time I've actually directed something he wrote. But uh, yeah, I've been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. It. I love the way he writes, and so <laughs> it was easy to uh, to want to direct this. Well, and the other thing was since it was the 10th anniversary and we got chosen for these mm -hmm. um, for Playwrights Roundtable I was able to say hey this is great thank you can Larry direct it and can we get Josh involved <laughs> so okay. that's how it happened and it was really smooth right. they were very encouraging it was wonderful yeah and so. he's written other things for Playwrights Roundtable I guess you know and then I have mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. uh, and I think the last time we met I had written something I was in the writer's seat rather than the director's right, seat that's but right. also direct for them as well so it's a nice organization uh, one that really encourages uh, new talent, new playwrights, uh, directors. It's, so it's a, it's a great place to. Uh, I love I love uh, working with them. We've done about half a dozen works apiece with them. Wouldn't yeah. you say? Uh -huh. Yeah. What other works have you done here? In the um, the first one was The Anonymous Dutchman in 2001 for me. Then we did a play that David Almeida and I wrote together called Close Encounter, which is actually playing up in New York City great. in late October and November. And we just learned that about a month ago, so we're kind of bragging. Um, there was uh, a play called To Have and Hold, Please. They did a production of mine for Fringe called Intermission. So there's quite a list. Yeah, I did uh, Dynamics of Double Dating, I think is when uh, mm -hmm, we met. Mm -hmm, and uh, which is, uh, here's uh, an indication of how good Playwrights Roundtable is about picking their shows. So many of the shows they pick uh, are done other places, like Steve's. Mm -hmm. My Dynamics of Double Dating was done in Tampa at a short play. Uh, festival. Uh, let's see, I did uh, Campbellville there, it was another one I wrote, and uh, the, Breath of Fresh Air. The really good one about the two people with the different languages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was, uh, yeah, uh, that was uh, House Across the Street. So I I've love had, that one. Uh, four, and then the, a Christmas one, a short Christmas one I wrote. So I've had, I think, five uh, shows that I wrote produced by them that I've directed so two or three good. times for mm -hmm. them, too. And I usually, I, uh, lately, I've been directing their French Festival uh, shows that they pick for the French Festival. So, yeah. Good. So playwrights is actually really a good creative launch for for playwrights to get their work out there and get it outside of Orlando. Even mm -hmm. it, it really like. is. It really is, and direct and, and gives a chance to young directors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, yeah, it's a great it's a great place. Even Seven Second Itch has actually been picked up by ID America in New York City for a readers' production in November. Hoping I can overlap the two plays so I can see them both at the same time. But great. they're doing nice. Yeah. Now, since you've done this a few times, have you ever done any uh, revisions, or do you just kind of leave it alone and, and... Little ones, but you know, when I came up with the pace and the fact that, you know, here's four lines back, here's mm -hmm. where they re release to something six lines back, and here's, mm -hmm. you know, an instant pause. Once you've built that meter or that rhythm, you don't mess with it too much, because it makes it harder for the actors, believe it or not, harder for the ma actors to memorize, harder to direct. Mm -hmm. You know, you need those little pauses and things like that. Yeah, seeing dynamics of double dating, uh, produced for the first time, I did go back and rewrite just a little bit of it, but things that had sounded good on paper when I was in my head and when I wrote it, or even when I doing rehearsals, I it sounded good. But then when the production actually came out, you know, that could be worded differently. So it wasn't changing anything big. It was more rewording to make it easier for the actors to say things that have words that were uh, juxtapositions that were not easy to say. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it does help very much in that way. So then the one that they did in Tampa was only slightly different, just has some different wording. And playwrights are never quite completely <laughs> done with their plays. It's always a work in progress. And especially when you get a new actor or actress, you say, right. you know what, I may change this line just a little bit just to make it, you know. To reflect that oh, person's yeah. interpretation of it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's great. Seven second inches. Hilarious. Thank and you. Uh, congratulations on having it selected as a, one of the summer shorts for the anniversary. Thanks. And as always, it's great to have you both here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Playwrights Roundtable, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care.
Playwrights Roundtable provides opportunities for authors to have their work read by professional actors. Members of Playwrights Roundtable have seen their works go from cold readings to workshop productions and on to successful full productions. If you love the craft, Playwrights Roundtable is the place. For more information, contact Playwrights Roundtable at 407-788 8468 or check out the website www.playwrightsroundtable.org